Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today back out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. Uh, we're going to be working on this uh, 1917 Vulcan Ironworks 040 steam locomotive, narrow gauge. Uh, this is um, kind of the crown jewel of the museum, I, in my opinion, one of the most uh, popular attractions out here. People come out to ride this train on Saturdays when they run it. And uh, had a little issue with the steam chest on the on the right steam engine on the locomotive. And we have previously removed that out, done a repair to it, brazed up a, a broken um, packing gland for the valve rod and we are today going to be putting it all back together and hopefully getting this uh, locomotive back up and going so that we can run it again this weekend so uh this was kind of a quick emergency repair that had to be done uh during a couple of days where we weren't running the locomotive uh, not a major uh repair but definitely time consuming got a bunch of time in this and hopefully this will get it squared away and taken care of until we can do a more permanent uh fix on it and replace the part uh, that is broken but until then it's just going to have to make do with the repair job that we got done so without further ado let's get in here and see if we can get this steam chest uh, reinstalled this is the steam engine on the right side and we put a towel over this to just kind of protect it since it was going to be out in the open don't want a bunch of stuff getting down inside uh, this uh, valve so what we've got here is a slide valve it literally slides back and forth there's a yoke inside the steam chest that moves this back and forth and there are some ports up underneath this that allow the steam to either go to the the cylinder or to exhaust out of the locomotive. So let me see if I can kind of move this out of the way and give you an idea of what it looks like up underneath it. So what you're looking at here is the top of the steam cylinder. Down here is where the piston is. It goes back and forth. And up here is the valve. And this is what puts the steam to the to the pistons and actually exhaust things out so this valve just kind of sits on top here and uh, it slides back and forth on this plate now in the center this is where the steam comes to the steam engine on the outside this is the exhaust it takes the steam basically through here up through the smoke box in the front of the boiler and it blows the exhaust up the smokestack to create more draft now so what happens is, is the steam comes in here and depending on the position of this valve there's a yoke that is tied into to the, this it just kind of slides this back and forth more precision than I'm doing it. It's got guides and stuff that's inside that steam chest. But when it comes forward here, what's happening is as the steam comes up from the center, goes into this side, into this port on this side, which ports the steam over to this cylinder, it pushes the piston forward. At the same time, you got this end is open so that any steam that's in this side of the cylinder can exhaust out and go out this pipe up the smokestack as the piston moves forward the um, valve is going to slide the other way so now as the piston comes to this side the valve is on the other side it's going to port the steam on this side push the piston back this side is on the exhaust mode shooting it up the smokestack so this is all timed to the engine and uh, everything it just slides back and forth and opens up the uh, inlet valve and the exhaust valve as needed to put the steam on the cylinder. Unlike a combustion engine, a steam engine pushes on both sides of the piston. So you get a push in each direction. So that's kind of how this works. And what we're gonna be doing now is putting the steam chest back on, put that yoke back in here, get all this reassembled. Uh, There's a cap that goes on top of this. There's some springs in here to keep all this nice and tight and sealed up and uh, anyway we got to get all that back together so I'm going to be getting this cleaned up and ready to go and uh, when David our shop foreman here at the museum gets here the two of us will work on getting this put back together so here is the repaired steam chest again the part that happened that we had a pro issue was was this packing land on the front this is the valve that slides back and forth. This is the yoke that moves that valve in there. Uh, but this connects into the connecting rods and the valve system on the locomotive. And it literally just moves back and forth kind of like this. 
what had happened is on this front flange here, uh, this is where you put packing, you pack packing in here. There's a, a um, ram that kind of goes in here and presses that packing in tight, keeps it tight around the shaft, and that prevents any steam from escaping from the steam chest out around this valve rod, or at least minimizes it greatly. Um, and what had happened here is that this had been broken about 25 years ago, and they had repaired it, they had welded it back together, and we had, it, the weld broke, we had to come back in here, we re raised all this up to kind of hold it in place hopefully keep it together until we can get a new steam chest cast and machined uh, and we've got the original blueprints from the Vulcan Ironworks factory uh, dated 1917 the same year that our locomotive was uh, built and we're going to be making a whole new steam chest having a pattern done getting a new part cast I'll machine everything out and eventually we will replace this with a new casting but in the meantime this repair should suffice uh, until we can get all that work done. Basically what's happening is, is when you tighten this this uh, gland or the, the piece that presses inside of this it's putting a lot of pressure on this and over time it just pulled loose from where it had broken before. So we've got it welded back up or brazed back up and uh, hopefully that will last until we can get a new part made. On the top and bottom of the steam chest, you'll notice there's a little indention milled in here. It's quarter inch wide and about three sixteenths of an inch deep. And uh, that is where a gasket fits on the top and bottom. So the gasket sandwiches between the, uh, the actual uh, valve chest below this and there's a plate that goes on top of this and all that sandwiches down there's the bolts that clamp everything down this gasket is is a, just a copper piece and um, we basically made it out of a piece of a copper ground rod like you would use on a an electrical job and it's just some heavy gauge copper and it sandwiches in there and holds it together we will be also using um, addition in addition to just the copper in there we put use a copper rvt uh, a uh, silicon type product kind of like you would use on a on a head gasket on an automobile and uh, that has served us real well just kind of gives us a little bit more protection and make sure that we get everything sealed up real good so um We'll be reusing the gaskets that were in here before. They're still look like they're in good shape. I know that we have had to replace these copper gaskets in the past where uh, the steam chest got loose and the steam would make a cut through it. It would start a little small um, leak and, the, and the, the steam would eventually cut it out. But fortunately, uh, what we got now has been holding good and I think they're gonna be fine. Uh, we can tend to reuse those and, unless there's a need to replace them. So I think we're just gonna go with the ones we got for right now and probably whenever we replace the whole steam chest, we'll go ahead and, and make new copper gaskets at that time. I think we're about ready to start putting this back together. First thing I wanna do is uh, we're gonna kind of roll this valve up and over for just a minute. And I'm gonna put a little oil down here. This just slides back and forth on this plate. And normally we have an oiler that injects oil into the steam, a steam cylinder oil. Come on, oil pump, there it comes. And um, that oil kind of mixes with the steam and it keeps everything lubricated inside this uh, steam chest and even the cylinders in the in the uh, in the in the pistons and stuff so but since we're putting it back together dry a little bit of oil in there is not going to hurt anything and should help this thing slide until it gets kind of lubricated back up under normal operation so we'll put that on there and now that slides very nice and easy. That's what we want. All right. That's, uh, we're gonna get the steam chest ready to go back on here, get this gasket kind of set in place with the RVT and uh, drop it in place. Permatex Ultra Copper Gasket Maker. This is for high pressure applications. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a little bead all the way around this groove. I may have to open that thing up another. Yeah, let's open that up another notch. 
Bosco. So we're taking the copper RVT and we're just kind of making a bead all the way around this in that little trough that the gasket's going to fill down into. Uh, I will note here that we are working right now on the bottom side of this. This is upside down. And one of the things that's going to happen is that once we put that copper gasket in there, the silicon's going to actually hold the gasket in place so that when we flip this over and drop it down onto the, the, the top of the, the steam uh, engine, it will keep that gasket held in place uh, while we're doing that. Uh, this copper RVT works really good. It kind of fills in any small nooks and crannies in there uh, that might uh, allow some steam to escape around. And like I said, we're just going to put this on there. We're going to go around, seat it really good all the way around there, and that will hold it in place uh, once we flip it over on the engine. So down on this bottom, we went around it right where that gasket is going to come in contact with the metal. And we put a little bead of the copper RVT around that as well. And uh, that hopefully should seal it up. We've had good luck with this in the past. I know that's probably not how they did it in 1917, but uh, it's worked well for us. So we're going to continue doing this. All right, here we come. Let's sit it down for a minute. <laughs> Let's go ahead and drop it on the studs. Hold on, Andrew. That warm is in my way. There we go, man. Okay, now I got it. All right. Like you want. Yep. Okay. Just got to get it to go down. There it goes. Starts. Hang on a minute. I got to get this yoke over this. All right. Pull our blocks out now. I think we can drop it down there safely. Yep. Ready? Yep. I think we're down, more or less. it down all the way well why don't you get me a little hammer and we'll just tap it down with a block of wood yeah I think it was just up maybe in that corner I got down I think we're good Yeah. All right, that is in place. So we need to get our valve springs back in there. There's some little blocks that kind of have some spring pressure to hold us down. And these are just some springs that fit down up underneath these. So there's uh, two long ones and two short ones fit right in here. That's number one. Yep. Can you put it all in there? In, in there? What do you think? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and this has just got a little oil right here. We'll put a little, little thin layer of oil on that. It won't hurt nothing. But I got these numbered just like they came out. This one fits in right here. And you see that spring pressure, and that's going to create a seal and downward pressure. It's going to slide on the top plate when we clamp that in. And that just keeps this pressed down. Uh, number, give me number three. Oh, never heard a steam engine. That one drops in right here. All right, give me number two. That one's in there just like that. And number four. Yep, and that was in there in that direction. Very good. Give me a rag. There were also a couple of shims 
between this yoke and the valve and we're going to put those back in there this one was in the back right rear and the other one was kind of up in the front here left front and i'll slide back and forth on that so we are ready now to get our gasket on the top and put the top plate on so let me have the rvt again All right, ready for the gasket. This gasket will fit right in there, just like the last one. And I'm gonna try to make sure it's in that groove good and kind of seated around this. Got that gasket material kind of squirting out. And the plate's gonna drop on top of this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put another layer on right on the top of it. We'll be ready to put the top plate on. All right. I wanna oil these uh, rods here real good. These slide on that top plate that we're going to put on. And we'll make sure there's good lubrication in here. And we did oil the bottom of that too. I got, let me pick my end up a little bit. Here it goes. So we're getting ready to put this on. We uh, have got some nuts that are going here. And based on what we've done in the past, we've torqued these on 160 foot pounds. And um, you know that's, that's what we did some research on in the past. And that's what we've done in the past. That's what our record. So we'll do the same thing. We're gonna put any C's on all these. Uh, I will note too that we've got uh, up here on the top, there's this little hole. That's where the oil comes in. So there's a mechanical lubricator uh, on the engine that basically pumps oil as the engine is moving down the track. That goes into this top hole and there's a, a ports in here that drop it into the steam chest on either side. And that little bit of oil, the steam cylinder oil, it will kind of dissolve into the steam and lubricate everything inside there. So that's what lubricates that slide valve. That's what lubricates the uh, pistons. Uh, don't have an oil pan like a car does. We're actually injecting the oil into the, the steam. All right. Sandy C's just uh, puts a little layer in between the the threads and the bolt and helps protect them and keep any corrosion out and usually makes taking them back apart later easier. So we'll go ahead and just hand tighten on all these nuts and then we'll start tightening it up. We're going to start tightening these up and we're just going to start on the outside and kind of go across ways and we're just going to slowly tighten it up. So we'll go across it. Come over here. Now we'll uh, come to this one. We'll go across it. This one. Do this one. And we'll come back over and do these. He 
Yeah. This one here, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I've already got that one. Yeah. So we got the torque wrench, and we're going to go up to 140 pounds on this. We're going to start with 80, and, and then we'll just increase it up a little bit at a time. Right, and now we're going to increase our torque wrench up to 100 pounds. We'll just work our way up. Well, I said we were stopping at 140. We stop at 160. what we had on our paper. There we go. Ah. Yeah, it's good exercise. Make you sweat. South Georgia it will anyway. And I'm going to go back around them just to make sure. All right, I think we got them. Yeah, it's, we got those. We got them all. 160 get this on so now we need to put our valve rod back on before we do we're gonna put our packing piece back in here we will have to pack it but I'm just gonna get it in there right now we'll worry about that later and there's also a jam nut that goes on this and we had seven threads exposed when I took it off and we want to get this thing right back to where it was because this affects the timing of the locomotive and we had this locomotive timed up pretty darn good so let's see one two three four five six seven so it needs to go somewhere right along in there we've got the valve slid in from the back now and this will come in here and this will screw on to this rod. Pick it up just a little bit, David. Get it going straight. There it goes. Yep. Screw it on. Go ahead. There we go. should be about right right there isn't it Hold it up. all right go ahead and put the pin in there there we go and then we will tighten this jam nut up right here lock it in place and that should have the valve rod connected so the game plan is, is we're going to go ahead and steam this locomotive up before we put the cover on here. There's just a decorative cover that covers all this up. And just make sure we don't have any steam leaks. And uh, once we cool it back down, we can put that cover on there. But there are a couple of things that need to go in here. There's this uh, relief valve that screws into the front. Again, I explained when we took it out, 
there's just a little valve in here that when you have pressure on the cylinder, it closes the valve, but whenever the pressure drops or you're at the depot or you know stopped, there's no pressure on the cylinder, the weight will open it up and it just lets this cylinder breathe. Um, let some air get in there so you don't get vapor lock and so that uh, it lets any some of the some of the steam and condensation out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and screw this thing in. We need for it to be steam tight for our test. So we'll just go ahead and get her in here. There's also the oiler that goes in up here at the top and we'll go ahead and get that put in as well because the steam can escape out around that. But before we do, we're gonna test this. We're gonna just put it on, hand crank the lubricator and just make sure we got good oil coming through here. It's something we like to do every now and then just to make sure everything's working like it should. And this is a prime opportunity to do that. So we'll get around over there and hand crank on that lubricator and just make sure it's squirting some oil out. Yep, it's uh, squirting water right now. But I can see every single squirt you're making. Keep on going. Let's get the water out of the lines. It's like we had some condensation in that line. All right, oil's coming out. So it took 60 turns. We usually do what, 100 turns on that? 100. I guess our protocol is good. Yeah, so when we're firing the locomotive, we hand turn that 100 turns. That gets oil in the cylinder when we start up. So that is working as it should. And we'll go ahead and put this back in. Well, it's gonna have to come back out. So we'll just do it good enough right now. So David's gonna go ahead and start packing this gland up here. It'll take a little while to do that. While he's doing that, I'm gonna start getting her steamed up and we'll bring you back once we get some steam on here and check for leaks and uh, make sure everything's working like it should. Well guys, you can see a little steam escaping over here. We have fired this thing up and uh, took her for a good test run, checked everything out, and the steam chest is not leaking at all. What you're seeing right now is the relief valves on the front because we have shut everything down. The pressure's down a little bit lower and that's just the steam escaping out of it as this thing is cooling down. But we didn't have any leaks around our gaskets. Everything appears to be working good. Uh, we've got packing in there. Like I said, everything worked just like it should. So uh, tomorrow after this thing cools down, they'll come back and uh, put the cover on this um, seam chest over here, get it pretty much back like it needs to be. They're gonna probably put some more packing in there. Once you run it a little bit, all that packing gets tight and you need to put a little bit more in there. So they'll come back and do that tomorrow when it cools down, but uh, she's ready to go. Uh, we got lots of events coming on this fall and uh, this train is gonna be seeing a lot of, a lot of use uh, over the next couple of months. So uh, glad to have that repair taken care of until we can do a more permanent fix and have a new casting made. So um, success for the day. So guys, uh, appreciate you watching very much. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciated. Uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, big, huge thank you all the supporters out there who support the site through Patreon, PayPal, etc. cetera. Uh, like I say all the time, we couldn't do everything we do if it wasn't for all of the support that comes from you guys out there. And it is greatly appreciated. We're gonna put the old train to bed for tonight. Uh, they'll be firing the back up on Friday for a little bit and then Saturday, they'll be running it all day long. And uh, train will be running pretty much most Saturdays uh, throughout the year. So uh, people don't realize how much work goes in, is involved in keeping a historic piece of machinery such as this locomotive that's a little over 100 years old up and running. It is constantly needing attention on something. And um, we could probably spend a month just doing repair work on it right now. Just little things that aren't serious, but need to be addressed at some point in time. So we're always working on this thing, always trying to keep it in operating condition. And that is the goal, to keep this history alive and give people the opportunity to come out and see a real live steam locomotive in operation at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. Guys, uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.